Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to do another tutorial in Lightroom and it's going to be on how to get some blue retro tones in your images. So I've been doing a few toning tutorials lately and I'm hoping to do something a little bit different with my channel. I'll talk a little bit more about it maybe towards the end of this video. Um, but for now anyway, we'll get stuck into the tutorial. So first off, I'm just going to make some adjustments in the side panel of the develop tab. So first off, we're just going to alter the temperature of the image. So a lot of these photos from this particular series of images that I photographed uh, are quite warm. So we really want to cool them down a little bit. I'm going to move the temperature in this photo over to 4738. So it's going to be a fair bit cooler. Just there. Uh, but Pretty much with your own photos, I would definitely recommend just judging it on how warm your images are because if they're not overly warm, then obviously moving it down that far might make them too cool. So just kind of judge it on how your photos are. I'm just going to move the tint to zero because we don't want much of a tint with that. Okay, and now we're going to go down to exposure and just move that up to plus 12 just to give a little bit more brightness in the image and just down to clarity as well down here and we'll move that up to plus seven okay so that's most of the basic adjustments done now we're going to get right into the coloring so we're going to go to tone curve this time and I haven't done a tutorial using curves in Lightroom yet it's a little bit different to Photoshop um, but it's pretty much the same so I'm going to start off by just altering the RGB. So I'll just click on channel here and click RGB. Okay, and under RGB, we're going to put in some points. So the first point is just going to be 0 and 3.1. So just click and move up to 3.1. And the next point is going to be 16.1 and 17.3. So we'll click again and move that down to 16.1. Okay, and then the next point will be 41.6 and 41.2. And then the next point will be 79.2 and 80.4. And the last point for RGB will be just 100 and 100, which is already there. So that's the RGB done. So I'll just show you guys what that's done. It's just given it a little bit more of a faded effect to kind of contribute to that retro uh, effect overall that we're after. So now we're going to click on in, just in the channel area here, and we're going to click on this and go to the red channel now. Okay, now we're going to map out some points in the red channel. So the first point will be 0 and 7.1. The next point will be 21.2 and 19.6. And then the next point will be 67.1 and 67.8. And the last point will be 194.9. There we go. So we'll just click on here again and we'll go into the green channel this time. And the first point will just be 0 and 0, which is what we'll leave it as just there. The next point will be 29.4 and 27.8. Then the next point will be 67.8 and 68.6. And then the last point will just be 100 and 100, which is already there. So now we'll go on to the final channel, which will be blue. And the first point will be 0 and 1.6. The next point will be 31.8 and 34.5. Then the next point will be 55.7 and 61.6. Then the next one will be 82.4 and 85.1. And the last point will be 99.6 and 95.7. Okay, so that's curves done. So I'll just click that on and off and you guys can see what that has done. That's just given the image a little bit more of a blue effect. Um, definitely what we wanted for the retro effect overall as well. 
So we'll just go down to HSL now, which is hue, saturation, and luminance. And I'll go to the hue first, and we'll just put in some more points. So uh, this one we're going to move to minus four in the red, just to give it a bit more of a pinky effect in the red tones of the image. Orange will be moved to plus seven, and that will change the oranges to more of a yellowish tint. Uh, yellow will move, or we'll just leave that at zero for now. Uh, green, we're going to move to minus 31. Aqua, we're going to move to plus two. Blue, we're going to move to plus 20. Purple, we're going to leave at zero. And magenta, we're going to move to minus 31. Now we're going to move over to saturation and we're going to leave the first three red, orange and yellow at zero. We're going to go to green first and move that to minus 51. So really desaturate some of those green tones. Aqua we're going to move to plus nine. Blue we're going to move to plus nine. Purple will be minus 13. So we'll take away some of that oversaturation in the flowers there. And magenta will be minus nine. Okay, and now onto luminance. Red will be left at zero. Orange will be plus two. Yellow will be zero. Green will be plus 13. Aqua and blue will be left at zero, and purple will be at plus 20, so that'll really brighten the flowers up a bit. And magenta will be left at zero. So now we'll go down to split toning just underneath, and we're going to click on this color here, and we're going to move the marker over to 52 degrees. And we're going to move the saturation to 10%. So it's kind of like a warm yellowish tinge uh, that will help with the retro effect as well. And we're going to do, click on the shadows one now and we're going to move the marker over to 239 degrees. Which will be more of a bluish color and we're going to set the saturation to 29%. So it'll really give that blue effect now with along with the retro tones. Okay, and now we're going to move the balance here in between just over to plus two. All right, guys, so that is the end of the tutorial. I will do a before and after for you. So we'll see what the before and after looks like. This is obviously the after, but I'll go to the before now. And that was before I cropped it as well. So that's the before. And it's lagging a little bit at the moment, but that is the after. And I'll just do it once more. So before. And after. All right, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, as I was saying at the beginning of the tutorial, I am hoping to get some more interesting videos on my YouTube channel. So I'm really wanting to not just stick to tutorials, which I have been doing a lot of lately and just kind of behind the scenes um, you know I really want to introduce more possibly interactive content to my channel but just more interesting content because I think you guys would like to see maybe some things that are different every now and then not just the same sort of thing and I was thinking about incorporating a bit of vlogging into my channel I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet or whether it's going to be relating to photography or not um, but let me know what you guys think of that idea anyway, and if you have any suggestions for my channel, I would totally love to hear them. Um, I'm really just trying to get a few ideas together at the moment on how I can just make it a little bit more interesting and how I can keep going with doing a few videos a week as well because I am so busy. Um, so some of the vlogging videos that I was thinking of doing would be fairly easy to do for me, so I could probably do at least one video a week there if I was to do something like that. but. 
Let me know what you think anyway. I hope you really enjoyed the tutorial and I will see you next time. Bye.